exactly. Oh, Zane, it's been too long since we last chatted. Yeah. How you been? Been good. I've been really good. I'm 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 trying to get as much stuff done before Friday or before end of day Friday. So then I can really feel like I can unplug for next week. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, but... I last day is Thursday, so hmm. It's been a bit of a chaotic three weeks. I mean, I feel like I've had so many meeting requests from different people. It's just been, mm-hmm. I didn't even want to count them. I, the last I looked was around about 65 in the last three weeks. Oh my gosh. that's It's wild. too much. It's too it much. Really is. There's a conference in there as well. So oh my gosh. just a half day. So nothing major, but you know, need to get out there, meet the wine people, Damn. shake some hands, kiss some babies, you know, that type of stuff. Yep. So it's been fun. But looking forward to talking to you again um likewise you know obviously this has been released on the protea youtube channel protea academy and it, it's it's done well mm-hmm. people seem to be liking it the feedback is is generally good i know specifically my team will reach out like oh that was a great episode it's like oh you watched it they're like yeah of course we did <laughs> so so they enjoy it and it's obviously you know it's your face and, and your voice and your ideas which are super helpful to the conversation obviously we're coming from two extremely different worlds which uh, provides some some good context i think you know and uh i sent you some questions and hopefully we can see if we can work our way through uh five of them on total and uh we'll just sort of take it and see how naturally it can come and hopefully we can we can tick them off but uh it seems to be all the craze right now so we're gonna stick with the theme of technology and accounting yes yeah yeah, and I'm trying to think what comes to my mind initially when I'm ta- talking about technology. I mean, obviously, everyone's talking about AI. And I do think AI, there's a lot to be said about how we should be incorporating AI into our accounting practices. Mm-hmm. But I was having a really great conversation. I'm actually going to be interviewing uh, a gentleman on my my podcast. Um, and one of the things we're going to be talking about is AI and how he's doing this for his clients. Because, right, I work with software development agencies. Yep. And so it's really interesting getting their take. And and what he said basically was like, look, AI is just the next hot thing um, that it's just not going to fix everything that you think it's going to fix. And so, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's like the whole thing of you can't fix a broken process with technology. Like yep. you can make it easier or you can make it run faster in the wrong direction. Yeah. Um, and so I, I very much hold that same mentality when it comes to the technology we adopt in my firm. Yeah. You know, like I, I had done a little bit of uh, poking around into a few different financial reporting solutions because I'm like, man, I do kind of want to up my game in that area, right? I want to continuously mm-hmm. deliver higher and higher value to my clients. But the struggle that I had when I was running these trials is I'm like, it's still not as good as some of these custom dashboards that I put together in Google sheets. You know, I feel like I should be spending more money, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to go to this flashy tool if it's not going to produce more value for my clients. I totally agreed. And yeah, we touched on the reporting the last time and, you know, I mentioned we're implementing reach reporting and you know, it's, it's been great. Our client absolutely love it. Uh, the bankers that work with them absolutely love it. Um, it's just much more digestible in the format that's getting produced out there. Very customizable. Lots we can do with it. We're keeping to the super basics. You know, our rollout is very simple. The non-customized um, reports to clients that are on QuickBooks Online. You know, so we're focusing on purely on our QuickBooks Online clients and quick purely on the ones that just want the simple reporting. And just expanding that for them, you know, that the traditional PL balance sheet is still in the reports, but we're giving them some snapshots along the way. And, and people are loving it. Not the most expensive t- tool out there, but we're sh- surely going to show, you know, we've spoken about us still being on hourly basis, that they're going to see a drop in their bill because, you know, preparing Excel um, management accounts takes time, mm-hmm. right? Where this one, once, you know, the first time around takes a bit of time, but then afterwards it's a price of a button. So actually, can I, can I double click on that for a second? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I think, you know, we, we talked a little bit about, I think, pricing before. Yep. Did we talk about pricing? Maybe a little bit, not nothing too detailed. Okay. okay. So even with like the hourly pricing, something I'm curious to get your thoughts on is 
when you take something like implementing reach reporting, uh, which ultimately will drive to it taking less time for you guys to mm -hmm. deliver the solution, how do you incorporate that? How do I want to say this? Do you end up having to bill your clients specifically for that technology, or do you try to like incorporate that into your new hourly rates? Uh, so a little bit of both, I would say. I think a lot of people would bill for the technology. We're not going to bill for the technology. Mm. We're just going to be like, we're going to take that cost. One, it's hard to hire people. So if I can reduce the hours my people are spending, which means I have to hire less people in the future, that's a win for me, right? So that's, that's the benefit. The way that I see it, especially things that make us more efficient, is during the tough times, they're not going to ask to turn off management reporting, right? It's not mm. costing them a lot of money. And they need that management reporting. As much as clients think like, hey, they're my accountant. I don't care about the books. They should be looking at these reports. And I'd rather make it really affordable for somebody to get management reports so that they will look at it. Hmm. The hope is, is that now that they're looking at reports that they actually understand as information that they can use, they'll start asking questions. Hmm. So instead of spending six hours on the set of management accounts, we're spending 15 minutes. But now that it turns into a one hour client meeting where oh, we're adding value, we can consult. Yeah. We can then discuss do we do forecast and budgeting? Yeah. And there's a way to do more value added type services. Hmm. And we can still make up the rates in the future. So it's almost like even though the amount of time it takes you to deliver the solution is decreasing, it's not like you're overall spending less time with the client. It's just you're shifting where you're spending your time. So it is a higher value work. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously because of how much of our work is transactional, right? You know, mm. our big focus is that controller level downwards is that how do we really reduce the touch points that are purely transactional? Make sure we're doing that as efficiently as possible to give the client's budget to be able to get the information that they really need. Mm. And you know, some of that only comes with trust, right? Sometimes, the way we see with the most of our projects, we come in, we start doing the basics for them. We get the books in order. They get them at the same time every month. They learn to trust us. They start asking questions. They want more services. They want higher value work. They want conversations with me. My rate's higher, right? So it's a revenue driver at the end of the day. Yeah. Also, because they're saving money on the transactional side, they are then spending that extra money on the consulting side. Maybe not with us, maybe with that also CFO. I don't really care. But what they're doing is they're spending that excess cash with people that can make a difference mm. to help to keep them in business. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I want people to stay in business forever and work with me forever. And I'll just mm. take the recurring income from now till I no longer exist. Yeah. yeah. And maybe even after you no longer exist. I mean, that's somebody else's problem at that point. But, you know, <laughs> I want to be sticky. I want to help these clients grow mm. and find ways to be part of the process for a very long time. And I don't want them to ever think like, oh, those management cost, accounts cost me so much money and I don't look at them. Mm. I'd rather give them something that costs less and they go, wow, now I actually know what you're talking about. Mm. Now I can yeah. see, you know, we send a set down and like, we got to give them a pie shot that breaks down where they're spending their money. And, you know, 45% of the cost is uh, payments to owners, you know? Oh, that's a warning bell. Mm -hmm. Or they look at it and how much, you know, they're all of a sudden their their liabilities are super high as a total percentage of assets. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And start to make you decisions based on the information. Yeah. So it's, it's important. We want our clients to start talking and I'm happy to take a haircut on management account preparation so that we can have conversations. Yeah. That's cool. I dig it. Yeah. I think, you know, as you're talking about that, one of the other things that's going through my mind about like the impact of, you know, how technology and how we, how we use technology in the accounting space. Um, just the other day, probably about a month ago, I came across a solution that would automate a data feed from this like proprietary operations platform to into QuickBooks. And it was like a bit of a premium monthly cost. Uh, but ultimately, you know, as we're calculating it out, my initial assumption is that, you know, it's going to save us more time than this is worth or that than we're spending. Mm -hmm. And so I think like another thing that I think about when I think about technology is if we can really, if it's really easy for us to quantify 
how we're saving time, um, which can then open up capacity for us. You know, because you think about like a, a a firm like ours, in contrast to yours, our capacity is very limited. So mm -hmm. usually, what that means is we can't take on very many clients, which is okay. Uh, and as long as we have those capacity constraints, you know, we are going to be limited to call it five, six, seven clients total. But if we can implement technology in a way that frees us up to have more time, we might be able to expand that to eight or nine clients. Um, and so, you know, yeah, we might be spending more money in technology, but uh, if that frees up capacity, then it might be worth it. Yeah, and that is, you know, that's what it comes down to a lot of the time is can we free things up? Can we become more efficient so that we have capacity to either help more people or help the people we're working with more? And that, I think that's the, you know, that whole conversation around technology and people, right? You have the technology piece, but you still have to have the people piece around it and making sure that those work, work together. Mm -hmm. And it is important to do those assessments. Like you're just talking about this great piece of software that makes life easier. In the wine space, there is a piece of technology that a lot of people are using because they've been promised it will make their life easier. Mm -hmm. And it does, it brings the transactions in fantastically. Amazing, much quicker than doing it manually. The problem is the reconciliation that it creates at the end of the month because there's no order trail on it takes twice as long as it would have been for me to manually do the transactions oh, and reconcile. That's them. a good point. That's a really good point. And, and in fact, I'm glad you brought that up because this solution that we're currently testing out, that is actually one of the concerns that I have is, you know, obviously with the audit background, of course, I'm going to verify during our trial. I'm going to verify like, all right, is, do we have a complete data feed coming through? And sure enough, I've just with like two seconds worth of looking, I was able to identify we have a difference. One of mm -hmm. these transactions didn't make their way over to QuickBooks. And then of course, you know, like you're talking about, we might save time in how we're booking, booking entries, but if we end up having to spend more time reconciling at the end of the month, it's not really a time save. No, and it's, it's, it's the worst type of time, right? Like transactional work is, can be monotonous, but it's not exhausting. Mm. A tough reconciliation can drain you. Like right. you can spend two hours on a reconciliation and then be done for the day Yes, because it is just so, it takes so much energy and it just saps you and you have to fully concentrate and any distraction can put you in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's one of those weird ones. You have to decide like, great, it might save on one end, but is it going to create more problems on the other? Yes. And generally, like, especially in our workflow, right? Um, we have the junior senior account manager, the juniors doing that processing, the seniors then doing the reconciliation. That's right. I would rather have more time put at my junior than at my, my, my senior over here. Cause I want them to do more high value stuff. I'd rather them focus on, you know, writing up management reports, writing up, um, doing inventory costings, reconciliation, coaching people, than them spending half a day trying to reconcile some entries because the piece of technology doesn't, you know, it's got a different clock to the sales system. Yeah. So the cutoffs are different. They're saying That's transactions right. on the first and the system saying it's on the second because the one is on Eastern and one's on Pacific, you know, like it's just little things like that, that I think it's always tricky. I mean, I would hate to be a software developer. Like, I mean, I did programming in high school. I did it in my first year of college, did well at it, but that was just purely like typing, you know, the program out like easy stuff. Right. It's then trying to figure out like how people are going to use it. What are the problems? How, you know, how is somebody going to be able to use this piece of technology efficiency is the tough part. Mm -hmm. And it's really difficult to think about, you know, millions of people's opinions on what it's going to do and what they need. And it becomes really tough. And I mean, I know we are like this in the accounting space a lot of the time where this is the only way right. to do things. <laughs> this is the best piece of technology. If you're not using it, you don't know what you're doing. Right. Right. And it, it's, it's never that black and white. We, we live in this world of gray. Um, you know, like we just spoke about me billing by the hour. Like if I go out there, like people look at me like I'm nuts, absolutely crazy. But then, you know, I have the stories during COVID where not a single client left mm. and we have other clients who are on fixed fee and you know what? They lost 40% of their book because their clients couldn't afford their contract. Mm -hmm. It's not as black and white as you think it is. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's situations that's going to work in a different, at different points in time. And, you know, we continue to have the struggle, like, because of the wine space, it's a tough time at the moment, you know, as much as we all want to not believe it, inflation is up, things are more expensive, people have less disposable income. That means wine sales are under pressure. Either people are drinking less, 
or they're substituting down to a more affordable brand. Mm -hmm. So people are struggling. So there are our clients that are going to be like, do the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. And we're like, cool. We bill you by the hour, no problem. Or if they're on a fixed fee, now we have to have a negotiation, rewrite the contract, mm -hmm. do some documentation, fight about what that real number is. Or they're just like, hey, we can afford 500 bucks. Right? Cool. We'll work 10 hours and stop. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, it's pretty simple. Hmm. Um, so I think we live too much in black and white and technology is definitely in that space. Mm -hmm. And, you know, AI is one of those spaces as well. And it is all the rage, but we all forget, I think even accountants that AI has been around forever. Mm -hmm. I know your, your, your favorite company Intuit have been using it for it for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Their bank feeds have been AI driven for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, I don't know if people understand this, that when it remembers where transactions go, that is part of AI. <laughs> you know, that is the computer learning that gets yep. been around. Yeah, I know everybody throws it in their face and, you know, there's a lot of great people out there doing some stuff with, you know, chat GPT and some of, you know, all the wonderful stuff around AI, but that's not, that's not where it's going to make a massive difference. It's going to have mm -hmm. some difference in what we're doing. But it's the way that technology is used in all your favorite pieces of software over the next year and a half that's going to make the big difference. And they're going to yeah. be small changes as well. Yeah. You know, it's it's fun being in the space that I'm in, being working with software developers. I actually um, am currently engaged with uh, a startup that is trying to utilize AI to um, effectively do bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. And it's it's been very interesting because, you know, call it, you know, 70 or 80% of our cash basis method of accounting is all done by categorizing cash transactions. But as you and I both know, that's not everything though. You know, it's, it's, it's addressing the fringe cases. It's addressing these other elements where you're just not going to get data from the bank. Like mm. great example is, you know, I might need to know if I have a SaaS company, I might need to know where my uh, clients or customers are located, the, the jurisdictions that they're located in so that I can properly parse out um, my sales or tag the sales so that when I go to do my sales tax returns, I can you know split it up into, all right, this is Washington, or this is Tennessee, and this is Minnesota and whatever else like that. Where if all we're doing is we're just saying, all right, here's AI that can you know automatically categorize my bank feed, you're not gonna get 100% of what you need um, for your bookkeeping. No, for sure. And I mean, you think about some places, like you'll have clients that do a lot of shopping at Target. Like yeah. you can't just put that to one account, right? Like right. they could be getting all sorts of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. They could be, you know, office supplies like pens and pencils and writing paper and all that type of stuff. But then they could also be stuff that they're, you know, stocking their kitchen with. So people have snacks during the day. Yep. yep. You know, and that's just two things just thinking about. And those are two very different categories that have very different tax treatment and cannot live in the same account at all. That's right. That's right. Or somebody, uh, an owner accidentally swiped their business card when they were at Target and they were actually trying to buy groceries for their family. Like there's mm -hmm. so many different things that that could be that it's almost going to be impossible for you to fully, I mean, I, I'll say this and then watch somebody will come up with a solution, but <laughs> it's almost going to be impossible for somebody to just only ever look at the bank data um, in order for that to be categorized for bookkeeping. <laughs>